Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 2nd, 2024, let's get into it. First thing I want to get out of the way is, uh, I think it's just a matter of time before I get banned from YouTube. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna start attaching to my videos, uh, not all the videos, but uh, you know the shorter ones, uh, where you can find me on the internet uh, other, other than uh, than YouTube and uh, so the burn on rumble that's uh, that's my geopolitical channel it's all one word no space in between uh, that'd be the, the main place and of course if you're on if you're into the outdoors with Kirk that's uh, that's on rumble too so uh, anyway and I so you'll see that at the end of my videos from now on but I did want to continue with YouTube I, what I found interesting is that uh, boy I tell you every two minutes there's a damn commercial and uh, I don't get the paid, I mean, it's, you'd say, God, Kirk, you, you're, on, you're on YouTube all the time. Why, why don't you pay for the premium? Well, I, you know, I just, uh, I don't mind the commercials. I just, in fact, I, I had one that educated me. Uh, they were talking about uh, this new product that they were marketing for cleaning your dishwasher. Well, I, I tell you how stupid I am. <laughs> I didn't even know you had to clean the dishwasher. So yeah, yeah, you got to clean it. And so there, it was. A, it's a tablet. And if you go on to Amazon, they, there's Affresh, which is the expensive stuff. And then there's this product called Active. And the, the thing I liked about Active is one box is a year's supply of cleaning. And then if you buy two, you actually get a bit of a discount. And, uh, and I read the ingredients on both of them, and it looked basically the same. So I look at Active as kind of a generic dishwasher cleaning product, and so I went with that. And uh, you, you're like, well, how does this watch in the world burn? <laughs> you know, I, well, this is going to be an everything video today. I'm going to talk about all kinds of, of different things. You know, same with uh, your, your washing machine. Oh, the, on the dishwasher, continue with that, there's a screen in the bottom of it, and I... Uh, I had to just twist it. There's a little knob on top or a basket and you twist that. Uh, you'll see, well, on my dishwasher, there was an arrow and you turn the arrow away and that little basket just popped right out. And it was pretty dirty. And uh, so you can pop that screen out along with the basket and clean them. And I, I cleaned them real good and just put them back. And for the first cleaning, you just put a tablet in the, the normal dispenser. And then I put one in the bottom of the washing machine. And from now on, uh, you just, well, you're supposed to clean, good Lord, I think they, I think it's once a month. I don't know if I'll do it that often. Because, I mean, I, I've i been using the dishwasher for years. <laughs> I've never cleaned it. <laughs> well, I didn't know, you know. It's, well, it's kind of like the washing machine. I didn't know you had to clean the washing machine, you know. I was I was uh, sitting in there, and this little light started blinking. Clean washer, clean washer. And I was like, how the hell do you clean a washing machine, you know. And so I went and pulled out the directions. They were recommending, of course, the expensive stuff. I imagine they get a kickback and... It's called Af Fresh. If you want to buy the good stuff or the bad, you know, they sell that at Walmart. It's kind of expensive, but uh, it is important that you clean your washing machine from time to time. You just run, put one tablet down in the washing machine and, and you can clean it and it works uh, pretty doggone good. Or at least I hope it works good. It, at least it cuts the light off. So somehow in that dish washing machine, it detects when it's clean and when it's not. How do you, and uh, so I, I just wanted to get that out of the way. And then on that topic, I, I did want to give you a quick story because I thought about this and it's kind of related. It was my first time, you know, if, if you're a, a mother, you know, be sure and get your kids into the kitchen. You know, my mom, well, she was kind of crazy. Uh, just just to be honest with you, I I, I don't know. She, she did all right. She, she didn't, didn't, well, she beat me a couple times. <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I won't get into stories about my... Uh, crazy mother but uh, she, she I never she never taught me anything about cooking and even when I went to college you know I used uh, the um, the cafeteria so I never had to cook in college and what I did is mainly just some oodles of noodles or something like that and uh, so the first time I cooked spaghetti I didn't know you had to boil the noodles of course stupid me I didn't read the directions I just put the noodles and the hamburger and the spaghetti sauce all down in the the pan and, and it wouldn't the noodles wouldn't, you know, get soft. I was like, why, why won't the, why won't the noodles get soft? And uh, so I just cranked it up, cranked it up, and I, of course I went in to watch some TV. And uh, the next thing I was like, what the hell? What's going on? I came in there, man. That <laughs> it was, it was a bonfire coming out of that frying pan. Oh my God! I almost set the whole damn kitchen on fire. I had to grab the fire extinguisher and blow that thing out, man. It was something else. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> 
<laughs> and of course my roommates, uh, you know, at the time I had roommates because I'm just out of college, they were just incredulous. They were like, how can you not know how to cook spaghetti, man? <laughs> it's the simplest thing in the world. I said, well, my mom never taught me anything, you know, and well, just read the damn directions, you stupid idiot, you know. So uh, that's why I said this is going to be an everything video today is as things pop into my head, there's a lot of things to talk about. You know, usually I focus on one topic. Like yesterday, it was, it was all about Gaza, and I, uh, I've said my piece there. I think I, I thought I put together a good video. Uh, well, let's continue with the next topic. Was um, somebody made a comment, and it's a legitimate comment, and they said, you know. Why do you bother <laughs> making videos? Nobody watches you. You have no followers. You know, uh, you, you know what? The, what the hell? I mean, you know, you, you put all this effort into these videos, and it, it just seems like a waste of time. Uh, and then, of course, the topics that you cover, the FBI is going to come knocking on your door. What the hell? What's wrong with you? Well, number one is, I don't think the FBI is going to knock on my door because number one, I'm not monetized, so I don't make any money. So what are they going to charge me with? You know, I'm, I'm deceiving people to make money or I've slandered somebody or anything. I don't see where the charge would be, but I'm sure they could make something up if they wanted to. And I totally agree with that. The, uh, the other thing is, um, uh, as far as the videos go, I do have a few followers on X, you know, so that isn't, I, it's not a total waste of time. Uh, I got about 600 there. That's a, that's a pretty good following. I don't imagine, I mean, not, they don't watch, every, all 600 don't watch the videos, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I might get 40 people that watch them or whatever, uh, and it's a hobby, it's something I enjoy doing, and uh, and also I can always look back and, you know, tell God I, I tried to help, you know, people in, in, in whatever way that I could, so my answer to the person is, why do you bother, you know, nobody listens to what you have to say, you know what? <laughs> You're not well liked, I guess. Uh, well, of course, I'm also buried in the YouTube algorithm. I mean, my God, the things that I talk about, you're not allowed to talk about. Uh, on, well, you. YouTube hasn't put it explicitly that you can't talk about them, but what they do is they bury you in the algorithm. And you'll see a lot of YouTubers that, that they do make money, and they have to be real, real careful what they say. Well, because I'm not monetized, I don't have to be careful about what I say. Because I don't care, but I do care in the fact that they 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 boot people off, they unsubscribe people, they bury me in the algorithm. Nobody can find me. Uh, but you know, more and more with X, I'm getting reach onto Rumble, and of course, also post on Telegram at the World Burning. So uh, you know, if you want to watch those videos, and then of course, my outdoors is outdoors with Kirk. So that's my answer to the person. And the other thing is, you know, I. I've almost died many times. I've had cancer twice. I severely broke my neck. Uh, I don't have any feeling in my feet. I don't have any feeling in my hands. Uh, in fact, I'm out here on a cold day. You notice I don't have a sweatshirt on. It's because I have no feeling in my nerves. Uh, it's a miracle that I can even walk. Uh, so I think that is a gift from God. And, uh, you know, how can I contribute? How can I help the world in any way, shape, or fashion? Well, I just make these videos. And hope that somebody watches them and that one of those 40 people that watch the video might change the world. You never know. So I made a video about the U.S. military and how we can't fight a modern war. I encourage you to go back. That was two videos ago. Check that out. Uh, because I just heard on the radio from Todd Starnes uh, that, uh, believe it or not, we now have a transgender colonel. Uh, in charge of the Space Force, or not in charge, but uh, maybe high ranking or maybe in charge, I don't know, that says inclusion is the number one priority of the Space Force. <laughs> now, fighting for the United States, that ain't the number one priority, it's inclusion. I, we are screwed as Americans. I mean, we're, has the world gone crazy? I mean, something, something ain't right here. I'm wondering if some sort of mind virus has gone around or or maybe some aliens are injecting nanobots into people's brains or something. I mean, uh, you tell me. I mean, I, I, this is just seems beyond. Uh, I, I don't. It just beyond reason. What's taking place in the West? I mean, I, okay. Well, getting back to why I make my videos, uh, I had a guy. He left a comment on uh, on a video, and I thought it was pretty cool. He said, uh, 
beautiful architecture. Uh, and that was the Putin uh, New Year's Eve speech, and it showed the architecture in Moscow. And it is astounding. Uh, it, it, the, the buildings in Moscow, good God, how long have they been around? Hundreds of years. And uh, they are astounding. I mean, we have nothing like that here in the United States. And uh, it's just, uh, I wish I could travel. I'd love to visit Russia and, and see the architecture there. I, there's a lot of people on YouTube who have been to Russia and they talk about it quite a bit. But I, I wanted to get onto a different topic and this was covered by Garland Nixon in one of his videos. Uh, he talked about the uh, Straits of Hormuz and also uh, where the Houthis are and the, the battle that's taking place there. I just uh, saw a tweet uh, or not tweet, an, an X or a post, a uh, post on X and I uh, Somebody uh, was saying that a, the Houthis launched some missiles onto uh, against a U.S. destroyer. And I thought that was just a matter of time, and it's just a matter of time before those U.S. bases in Iraq and well, they're already under attack in, in Iraq and Syria. But he was saying that he called it quicksand. Uh, <laughs> I love the if you ever watch Garland Nixon, he's great. Uh, he always comes up with these uh, analogies, you know, or, or ways of putting things that you just like. Wow, well, you know, how does he come up with this stuff? But he was saying that if we go in and we bomb the Houthis and they shut down, well, they've already proven that they can shut down the shipping there. Europe is screwed. I mean, they, they can't, I mean, we blew up the Keystone Pipeline. And the reason for that, I, you know, I, I was, I, well, you know, it was, it was many reasons for that. I, it wasn't just to isolate Russia. It was to isolate Europe because the, um, the American oil companies, they can make more profit selling oil to Europe than they can, uh, you know, providing it to the American people. And so I imagine there was some corporate uh, fascism that was going on there between the Democrats and the corporations. And uh, so that was another huge reason because, you know, otherwise, if, if the price of oil from the United States got too high, Europe might have just told uh, Russia to turn that valve back on and say, hey, you know, uh, we were wrong. Uh, can you go ahead and start pumping oil again? And, you know, I, I want to, let's go back to the blowing up of the Keystone Pipeline and how stupid people are. You know, the narrative that they were trying to spin was that Russia blew up its own pipeline. <laughs> that was the original narrative. Remember that? A lot of, and people believed it. Oh, my God. I was like, no, if, if Russia wanted to cut Europe off from oil, they just, they would just turn the valve off, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's no reason to, to blow up the pipeline, especially when, you know, down the road they could make a hell of a lot more money, you know, because once you starve Europe of, of oil, uh, you might be able to say, you know what, uh, you guys are getting pretty desperate there in Europe. How about we sell that oil to you for twice as much as we used to, right? Because you're the ones that were saying you didn't want it, but we'll, we're willing to give it to you, and that'll still be cheaper than what the United States is selling it to you for. What say you, Europe? And so the United States wanted to cut off the ability of Europe to, to be able to do that. Because uh, otherwise the, the corporations, the, the oil companies in the United States couldn't continue to send that oil. So I, I digress getting back to, uh, so you, that's what I'm saying is Europe is screwed. Uh, so, I mean, they, they, if, if, that, if the, the straits get cut off, the, the oil can't come through, if, if it, and especially if, if Iran enters the conflicts and shuts off the oil from uh, Saudi Arabia, and then if the Houthis get bombed, I imagine they're going to blow up the Saudi oil fields. You want to talk about the price of oil? And in Garland was pointing it out, you could see $25 a gallon for gas. No problem. And what blew my mind was today, the stock market went up 25 points. Uh, what in the hell? I mean, the stock market is divorced from reality. So I want to tell you a good investment you might want to look at right now is look at XOM, maybe some of the oil companies, even though they're evil, uh, you might want to buy one. I'm going to look at them when I get home. If they haven't gone up, uh, you know, tremendously today, given the news of, of, you know, firing on destroyers and the U.S. threatening to bomb the Houthis and the Houthis threatening to blow up the Saudi oil fields and, and they've cut off uh, Israel from, from all of their uh, shipping. I mean, you know, they... Just looks to me like the Middle East is going to uh, explode here at any time. Uh, and then I want to get back to this, this, this yesterday's video, New Year's Day, was I was talking about um, the the war on Hamas, and that's what I hear. I just heard it from uh, Buck and Clay again, and uh, they called it the war on Hamas. It's not a war on Hamas. I want to keep correcting you on that. This is a war on the Palestinians. It has nothing to do with Hamas. 
Hamas is safe down in their caves, man. They're not bombing the, 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 uh, the Hamas. They're bombing the Palestinians. They're exterminating the Palestinians. It's a genocide. So if you want to say the genocide on the Palestinians, that's the correct way to phrase it. You see how it gets spun? You see the war on Hamas. It sounds like, you know, killing uh, 11,000 kids and, you know, 25,000 civilians is a war on Hamas. That's not a war on Hamas. That's an extermination of the Palestinian people. So if our media would not would quit deceiving the American people and call it the, the war to exterminate the Palestinians or the, 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 the genocide of the Palestinians, I bet the American people might go, Hmm, maybe maybe I shouldn't go along with this. Maybe I shouldn't be all happy that you know we're going to kill two two million people, and and that's another thing I, I I I'm sure I didn't talk about it much in yesterday yesterday's video was uh, how isolated we've become. The whole world, the whole world hates the United States. In fact, the the most American uh, ambassadors won't even be they're not even received anymore in meetings or uh, you know. You, when you look at the welcome, I did a video on that that Putin got in the UAE. And when we send over Blinken, do you think that anybody even meets him coming off the plane? <laughs> it's probably just a little black car waiting for him on the tarmac, you know. There's nobody there to greet him, you know, because I mean, they don't give a shit. Everybody hates the United States. And can you blame them? You know, we're willing to go kill two million people and don't get blink an eye and everybody's all happy about it. Oh my God, I tell you, we are screwed in this country. So just to throw something fun in the video, I want you to look at this little guy. Look at him. Now, how much poop do you think that little guy can hold? Uh, you know, I guess if he hadn't pooped in like three days or something, but no, he pooped yesterday. He pooped twice the day before that. And today, three monster poops. Look at that little body. What is it? Uh, I think he's tapped into some sort of poop black hole or something like that and then how much pee you think that little guy can have i think he's peed like 16 times and i'm not talking just a little trickle here and a little trickle there i'm talking you know some some torrid peas coming out of that little guy where is all that coming from if you're a pet person explain that to me so getting back to the making of my videos uh yeah i did want to talk about you know some of the videos that i watch i i think they don't make it to prime time because I don't consider them interesting enough. But I will talk about, you know, some of the videos that I watch. Uh, for example, there was one, as I was making yesterday's video, that there was a bunch of people in uh, Gaza that were getting interviewed. And uh, they were very determined. They said, you know, the Israelis can exterminate us. They can kill us. They can, uh, you know, they can beat us up. But we're not leaving Gaza no matter what. So Israel's faced uh, with the decision, you know, they're going to either have to kill all the Palestinians, which is what they're trying to do, because uh, I guess they think that if they, if they kill enough of them, that eventually uh, the rest of them are going to just go ahead and leave. Now, I'm sure a, a percentage of them will, but not from the video that I saw yesterday. They said that uh, they're staying and that they're not going to allow Israel to turn them out into the desert where they'll all die anyway. So, uh, or to be dependent upon humanitarian aid, and we, you know, now I'm sure that Russia and China wouldn't let them, let them die, but, uh, you know, the Western nations would. I mean, obviously the United States wants them dead, you know, uh, and uh, the West wants them dead, so they, they certainly can't depend on any humanitarian aid coming from those sources. So, uh, that's, uh, that was a very interesting video. The other thing is, uh, and I've talked about this in the past, that maybe someday I'll make a, uh, a death video and uh but i you know i don't know i, I don't know if i want to torture people with that it's it's be it's so sick because you know a lot of the stuff that i watch uh you know i'm thinking well this would be a good video to add in and then you just you see the horror you know somebody blown apart or a, a grenade that lands right on top and then you just see the bodies not moving below you know from the drone because the drones take most of that footage and I'm like, I can't show that. I can't, I can't use that, you know. Or especially out of Gaza, you know, I've, I've seen babies with their, their heads, I mean, their, their, their limbs blown off. I haven't seen any heads blown off, just to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, limbs blown off or bleeding, uh, eyes gouged out, you know, from shrapnel. And, uh, you, you know, people with uh, missing, missing limbs and screaming and, you know, women wailing, uh, holding, you know, the, the body of their, their dead. Uh, 
uh, son or her husband or brother or whoever, somebody that they knew, their friend. And I, so I don't, I don't post those videos, just so you know. I mean, I don't put that in my videos, but I end up having to watch all that. And you say, well, that's, that's a taint on your soul. And uh, no, it's not. It makes me more determined than ever to try to, 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 you know, help the world understand what's going on. You know, I don't think that most American people have a clue, you know, the horror that's taking place right now in Gaza or Ukraine. I mean, because in Ukraine, same thing when those grenades are dropping into the trenches. And then, of course, you know, every time you see, you know, a tank blow up, which I can show, uh, but I, what the part that I cut out is when the guys, some of them actually escape the tank and you can see that they're, you know, they're staggering around uh, and then they fall down and you know they're dead. And I don't show that part. I just show the tank blowing up, you know. Uh, so, uh, and so that just, that it, it does hit you. Or um, I, I've seen a lot of uh, vehicles uh, where they're pulling the bodies out and there's blood all over the inside of these uh, track vehicles and stuff. Because uh, I, I, I have to fish through all of that stuff to make the videos. I, I'm not crying about it. I'm just telling you that, you know, I'm trying to, trying to show you the horror war without showing you the horror war. I mean, I, you know, tell me how I can do a better job because it doesn't seem like many people understand what's taking place and how the evil, the Democrat U.S. empire has become around the world. And how isolated we are. The whole world hates the United States. I don't think most American people understand that. And it's going to blow back on us at some point. I mean, this, especially as we get weaker and weaker. I mean, when you got a transgender colonel in charge of the Space Force, and of course up in the White House, uh, I don't can't remember that guy's name or what position he's holding. you got a transgender guy in the military. And of course, Lord Austin, he's a, he's a liar and a traitor. I mean, we're, our, our whole military command is just screwed. And as a such, our, our military forces are getting screwed. So anyway, that's just, I wanted to add that to the video. So I was going to finish off this video with something else, and I will finish it off with that. But no sooner did I get home, and I just started watching TV as I was making dinner and, uh, you know, doing some dishes and stuff. And uh, first piece of news was... Um, now that Israel has everybody herded into southern Gaza, and it's ironic that I made that video yesterday about a man's or his family's journey to get to southern Gaza for some safety. Guess what? The bloodthirsty Democrats have started bombing southern Gaza to kill more Palestinians because they got them more concentrated in an area. So now the genocide, I guess the numbers I was quoting yesterday, the genocide is going to be even, even greater. So the extermination of the Palestinians will proceed now at a, at a much greater pace as the, the uh, warmongering, bloodthirsty Democrats continue to provide 2,000-pound bombs to the Israelis to drop on the Palestinian civilians. Notice I did not say Hamas. Uh, that, that was very disturbing to me. The other disturbing thing that came in the news was uh, Israel just bombed Beirut in Lebanon. So they're trying to drag Hezbollah into the conflict. Uh, which I, I assume they think that the United States is going to have to come into their aid. I don't see how we're going to do it. Uh, you know, we're pretty low on munitions at this point. We've given all hell of a lot of our 2,000-pound bombs to Israel, and we've given a lot of our munitions to Ukraine. Uh, you know, so we, we are, anyway, let's not even go there. The, the, what, the last thing I wanted to talk about in, in this video, because it's a talking video, was uh, how, how you have to evolve your position. You know, I served in the military back uh, during the Soviet Union days and also during the Iraq War. And so I had a bias against uh, Russia. Uh, I always looked at them as an evil. Well, the Soviet Union is the evil empire, the communist. Uh, you know, they persecuted. They, they, you know, they had no freedom of press, which they do now. Uh, they, you know, they, they prosecuted their people, uh, you know, executions, you know, uh, trial without jury, whatever, you know. That was the way I looked on Russia. Well, as Russia evolved, my opinion of, of Russia changed. And, of course, when Putin came to power and, you know, you, you had the Western stories that he poisoned people and, you know, there's all these horror things. And uh, they could be true or not. He was KGB. Uh, but what I came to realize is that 
he'll do anything to protect Mother Russia. Imagine if Biden would do anything to protect the United States instead of Ukraine or Israel or the rest of the world. He, Biden couldn't give the the warmongering Democrats don't give a shit about the United States. It's only the globalist agenda agenda that they represent, and the globalists are all about uh, you know bombing the rest of the world. And they couldn't as long as they they've, they've got a morsel of flesh in the United States to give them tax money. That's what they're going to use it for. So, uh, so I wanted to just describe, you know, how you evolve your opinion. And then, of course, when you see pictures of Moscow, which I talked about earlier in the video, and how beautiful it is and how clean it is, and when you see pictures of the subways, you know, there's no crime uh, per se, uh, you know, because all the movies always depict the Russians as the bad guys. <laughs> and, and there are some mad Russians. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to meet a mad Russian in a dark alley. Let's put it that way. But... Uh, same thing happened with, uh, and of course, why they invaded Ukraine. I, I was going along with the Western media. You know, when, when Russia went in, I went, oh, man, you know, what's Putin trying to do? He's going to try to take over the world just like Nazi Germany did. And then, then you saw that they called it a special military operation. And I didn't really understand what that meant. But I educated myself when I learned. And then I learned about the, the, the Western-sponsored coup that took place in 2014. And then you learned about the civil war that was taking place between the Donbass region of Ukraine, because they speak Russian, and the Ukrainians. And how the Ukraine, they had the, then the Minsk Accords came. You know, if you watch anybody else, you'll understand the history. So my, my attitude evolved into where, you know, I see the Russian position. Okay, know your enemy or know your adversary. I don't consider Russia an enemy. They're, they're an adversary for sure. Uh, same with uh, Israel. When, when the, I've always you know, looked at Hamas as this terrorist organization uh, you know, of, of just you know, terrible guys that will just do anything, behead babies, you know, rape women, uh, whatever. Uh, but no, I think, you know, I, I, my attitude. And so when they first came across into Israel and all that propaganda came out, I was like, man, Israel, go get them. Go get Hamas. I didn't say exterminate the Palestinians. You know, it was kind of like the Iraq war. I was all for taking out Saddam Hussein. I wasn't for the occupation of Iraq. So you see how you have to evolve, you know. So at first I was with the Bush administration. Let's go in and take Saddam. Of course, I believe the weapons of mass destruction too. And that turned out to be a lie. So, so I had to evolve to where I understood that the, the Bush administration was an evil administration. Yeah, they were Republicans. You know, they lied to the American people. Uh, and I was all for, I mean, even, even lying to the American people, we'd just gone in, taken out Saddam Hussein, and then just pulled out and, and were gone and left Iraq to Iraq, I still would have been for the war, okay? Because, you know, I, 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 you know, Saddam Hussein used chemical weapons on his own people, the Kurds, you know, because they were part of his, his I mean, granted, it was kind of a civil war, but you, that was a war crime. <clears throat> so I was all for it. Anyway, I'm just telling you how you have to evolve with what you see in the world and what you learn about, uh, you know, so when you listen to the radio and they say war on Hamas, I just want to reiterate that. It's not a war on Hamas. This is a Democrat extermination of the Palestinians. Understand that. So on that note, let's get into a couple of uh, bookmark tweets that I have. Uh, on New Year's Eve, uh, 745 cars were burned in France. <laughs> uh Today marks the official entry, I guess this was, was New Year's Eve, or no, this was, a, uh, yeah, New Year's Eve, official entry of, of Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and UAE into the BRICS uh, fold. So the current BRICS members are now Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Very interesting, huh? So uh, this was the thing I talked about earlier in the in the video, the Houthis attack an American warship in the Red Sea. The uh, confrontation is still intense, are still intense. And this was earlier, and, and but I don't know anything more about that. Uh, and then this was an interesting one, and we'll finish off with this. Russia has built a wall of electromagnetic pulses against Western missiles. Telegraph. Moscow has quietly developed a knack for destroying some of Ukraine's most valuable rockets and missiles, the newspaper writes, the most modern missiles provided to Ukraine by Western partners do not reach their targets. The reason for Russian electronic warfare tactics. First, Ukraine noticed its GPS-guided 155mm X-caliber artillery shell, and this is true, I know this for a fact, 
suddenly began to veer off target. Then missiles fired from the HIMARS, and this is true too, whose accuracy Kiev once boasted was shrapnel-like, began to miss. In some areas, they almost always missed. The same thing happened when the JDAM guided bombs supplied to Ukraine Air Force by the U.S., the publication states. So I was telling you about electronic warfare and my war, how war has evolved video. I uh, just want to keep kind of building on all of that. Peace out. Stay free.